Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I guess I will talk a little bit about um, how we choose a journal for submitting a paper. I guess the first bullet I put up there is the um, full uh, whether uh, you know whether your paper is a full paper or it's a short paper, whether it's a letter of communication. Now, first thing is to know, of course, it's a kind of trivial, but you know many journals don't have short communications or letters, so we know it, that if you want to write a short paper, then you have to choose. The, uh, the, the journal of property, of course. Now, short articles are meant to communicate something important quickly to a broad audience. So, so if you have, if you think you have to write a short article, you know, there should be a good reason for it. It's not because the article is short. It should be because it is important and because a lot of people should hear about it very soon. And when, when, you, when you write these letters of communications, most of the time you will end up writing a full paper in due time where all the details are given and uh, all of the, the, uh, the things that people need to know about uh, uh, will, be, uh, will be presented. Now, what specific journal to publish your article? It's very important that you, you have a feeling of who the audience is going to be. Like, for example, in a theoretical paper, you can think about, you know, JAX publishes very few, but they do publish theoretical papers. J.P. Skim publishes a large number of papers. And my journal, Journal of Chemical Theory and Computation, publishes only theoretical papers. So why would you submit to one or the other? So this is, this is an exercise <coughs> in thinking, OK, so if I, have, if I have a paper which is going to be mostly of interest to theoreticians, then it should go to JCTC. But if it is of interest to physical chemists in general, including experimentalists, well, then it maybe it should be JPS Chem. And if it is something that is relevant, I have figured out and designed computationally a new catalyst to break split water, well, that might be of interest to a lot of people, and then that should be a paper in JAX. And then, again, on top of this is whether it's a full article or it's a, or if it's a short article, et cetera. For example, JCTC and JPSCAM and JAX all do publish communications, letters, short papers. But in JCTC, uh, um, uh, well, yeah, all three of them publish short papers, so this is an example that you can do that. Now, the submission letter, I may be very old-fashioned, but trust me, I read the submission letter, and nothing puts me off more than, you know, whoever cares, here is my paper. That, I mean, we get submission letters I like that, right? You know, to whom it may concern, here is my paper, publish it. Oh, yeah, well, guess what? You know, I like to know why you're choosing my journal. I like to know why you know, your paper may or may not be important, what you have done. I'm not a specialist in your area, and I need to know, you need to convey the importance of why the paper is being submitted to this particular journal and why the journal is a relevant journal for, for, uh, for that particular paper. Um, you know, as I said, I am old fashioned, but I think it's a good idea to address people by name, not to assume anything. Um, a lot of people that submit papers request a particular section of the journal and or a particular associate editor. You know, this is something that you always want to do. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, especially if you think that your article belongs in a particular subsection, don't let the editor choose that for you. Just, you can request it. The worst case scenario is that the editor in chief will not agree with you and just, you know, pub decide to publish the paper in a different section. But, you know, the, the, you know almost always, uh, I mean, at least in my case, I, we don't have problems with that. And uh, it's very, very important, again, to communicate the main message of the paper in non-technical terms in just one paragraph, something very, very clean that says, you know, I'm sending this paper to your journal because it's going to be of importance to, to the audience because of this and that reason, and the paper does this, all right? So why is it important, et cetera. And uh, right, now then come the reviews um, and the referee report. and. Here's my advice. Do not take things personally if the reviewer is too critical. You know, there are people that are critical. Most reviewers are critical many times. They don't have, most of the time, a problem with, you know, they are not personally attacking you. So don't feel offended. Don't, you need to have a thick skin to play this game. Because there's a lot of people that are going to write things and uh, that, that they're going to be you know, almost borderline and offensive. Sometimes I read all the reviews, and sometimes I do delete things from reviewers uh, because I just find them completely uh, um, um, nonsense. But in any case, you know, different people have different aptitude uh, and, 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 you know, to receive this kind of criticism. I think it's important not to, to take things personally. 
On the other hand, when it's your time to write to the reviewer, I think you need to play, you know, the high, the, take the high road in the sense that you always be polite in your reply. Don't, don't start thinking about, and uh, you know, do not second guess reviewers or editors. There is no hidden agenda against you. I call this the paranoid <laughs> author syndrome, PAX. It's very, very common. People think that there is a conspiracy against them, the authors, you know, to make this life impossible and this paper never be published. It's nothing like that. And uh, even if the, uh, um, yeah, so in your submission letter and your manuscript, you must address the points that have been raised. Even, even if you don't agree with them, you have to say, okay, I don't agree with them because of this or that. But, but the easiest way to get a paper rejected, okay, is to ignore the reviewer's comments, to try to sneak it in back. Maybe the editor is not gonna read this, you know, just let's try to sneak it in and send the same thing again. That's not gonna work, all right? So, so the, the process of peer review is not to be ignored. The process of, uh, is a process and you really, really need to address what the reviewers are criticizing. And you have to be polite about it and you have to, you know, react to it. Papers do go back to reviewers almost all of the time, and if, you, um, if uh, this paranoid author syndrome affects you, you, know, you can always request a new or alternative reviewer, but you need to explain why. You need to tell the editor, you know, I think this paper should be seen by a new reviewer because of this or that, or that reason, right? And you may or may not get the editor to comply with your request, but if you don't ask, surely you're not gonna get it. The recent mission letter, uh, it's very important to quote the reviewer, to address the remark and clearly indicate your response action. What did you do to the manuscript in response to the point? Use color coding, quotes, different fonts, bold fits, etc. All help make it clear what you have done to address the reviewer's comments. Make the job of the editor easier. That's, that helps us a lot. Never assume that the editor is a specialist in your particular specialty and uh, never assume that the editor has the time to extensively study your paper. You know, I read portions of most papers, but they let the reviewers do the really, really fine print. I mean, I cannot read 460, review myself 460 papers a year, but I do look at them, uh, pretty much all of them. Rebutting the reviewers is okay, but uh, again, be polite, precise, and very clear. And requesting that person X not be a reviewer without a clear explanation of a conflict of interest it's not going to work. And in my case, it's, you know, if you ask, I don't want this person to see the paper, that's a good reason for me to send the paper to that person because I want to know what that person knows about your paper that I will never know unless I ask that person. <laughs> and, uh, but if you say, this is a competitor and, uh, you know, and this is blah, 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 and that's a, you know, it's a, there is a conflict of interest that this person will not be able to objectively review your paper, then I will abide to that. But if there is no reason, then, you know, I'm not necessarily going to abide by a request like that. And I guess now it's uh, Sonia's time.